David Herbster is a name synonymous with the University of South Dakota's athletic program. From his 10-year tenure as athletic director to his current role as the lead community relations specialist for Sanford Health, David has long been at the forefront of fostering community connections. Under David's leadership, attendance for USD Athletics increased by 510%, and the Sanford Coyote Sports Center, where the Yotes now play basketball and volleyball, was built. But recently, Mitchell Olson had a chance to dig even deeper into David's life and achievements when he sat down across the table with him at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm actually having a mocktail. It's called Zach's Back. I think it's like, uh, and well, thanks for having me. And Katie's mocktail or cocktail, whatever it is, is That's pretty right. good. So thanks yes, for having me. Of course, of course. So, David, we go way back. Yeah. All the way back to Vermilion, we had some fun times. We actually filmed a few things together where we showed our amazing ability at basketball. I do remember that. That was fun. Yes. That was fun. Uh, what else? Uh, well, we've done the polar bear plunge for Special Olympics. I don't, well, you've emceed. Yep, yeah, you, that's right. You actually made me jump. There's been all sorts of different things. Vermilion is kind of our tie because you actually held a really prestigious position there at USD. Tell us what you did there. Well, I was, uh, I, we got there in 2007. I started off as the Associate Athletic Director, really as we made the foray into Division One, and, and it was there to kind of develop the revenue the revenue plan to figure out how we're going to afford all this. Yeah. And then uh, a couple changes later, I was the athletic director for the past 10 plus years um, in Vermilion and just kind of stepped down this summer to take a job at Sanford Health. That must be a difficult job to, to you just mentioned, you know, to actually figure out budget wise how to make something like that happen. Uh, where would you even start if you had no history in that? In, in college athletics right now, mm -hmm. <laughs> you better find help. <laughs> <laughs> you really, it's, you know, it's interesting because I would say just in the past 10 or 15 years, it's changed a lot. Just the landscape has changed a little bit and, um, and the services needed to provide back to the student athletes, just the overall landscape has changed. And as television has really entered into a predominant, you know, kind of a position within college athletics and the amount of money that goes behind that, you've, we've seen at a national level how conference affiliations have changed mm. to where schools are changing conferences and, and sometimes you scratch your head and you wonder why they did that, but you know it comes down to money. Now that wouldn't necessarily affect us at our, at our particular level, okay. but there is a trickle down that ultimately that you have to deal with, with because with that would come different in, in legislation and different um, kind of initiatives or programs of, of funding that you would need to figure out can you or can you not adopt. So it's a definitely a moving target one of our biggest expenses was always travel I and bet. so trying to figure that out from year to year can be a challenge so where did it begin I mean I, you're a very tall guy we're, we're the same height right. a lot of people don't believe that we actually are the same exact we're gonna prove it right now so uh, now, now that you, mm -hmm. do you have to pan up when you do that I don't know how that works <laughs> you probably pulls out or something you probably right. have some kind of a zooming her out right there we go he's got it he got it the same height. So I'm assuming that basketball played some kind of a role into, you know, your your journey sure. into being the athletic director at USD. So tell me where it started. Uh, well, I uh, w w was in high school in Virginia. Uh, my dad was military. When we retired, we retired in Virginia, Northern Virginia, about 25 miles outside of Washington, D.C. And so ended up going to, ultimately went to school, high school in Virginia, and then went to college at Virginia Tech. Uh, and they got my uh, graduate degree there. Um, and then uh, it was kind of in that balance of time of professional going overseas, playing in the United States, what do I do timing wise? I ended up um, getting my master's degree, realizing that I had a degree in marketing and sociology and didn't like where that was necessarily taking me, at least what jobs were open and a position to open up in the athletic department of Virginia Tech in sports marketing. So let's try that. I can stay in sports and do, and from a marketing standpoint, be able to stay in that field, which I really enjoyed. And it was really kind of at the early stages of marketing in college athletics. And then from there went to North Dakota State and Pittsburgh State down in Kansas, uh, jumped in, actually jumped out of uh, college athletics for a while, worked for Special Olympics Minnesota. Okay. That's probably, I mean, that's how I got to how much I'm involved here in South Dakota. Okay, I wonder when was happened. at Concordia University in St. Paul, Nebraska, Omaha, and then USD. Wow. Okay. Yeah, so jumped around a little bit at the end. Yes, but you stayed around the Midwest for a bit. Yeah. Yep. How do you like the Midwest? 
I do. I like it. You know, growing up, um, at least in high school, learning to drive and right around the, the Beltway of Washington D.C., where I always tell people, you learn you learn to drive with your your knees, and they look at you kind of funny. I'm say, well. One hand's on the horn, the other hand's out the window flipping somebody off. I mean, it is aggressive <laughs> when you're learning to drive in that. But the pace is so much better. I think the weather, well, you have to get through the winters. But I think the people, much more genuine. Um, and it's just a, we found it as a place where we really wanted to raise our family. Yeah. And then we stayed here. Over your... Uh your career there at USC, what do you think was, I know there were a lot of memorable moments, a lot of, um, of wins and, and things like that. What, what do you think is probably your crowning achievement there? Oh boy, um, if I think from a work standpoint, a professional perspective, I think it's the facilities that we built um, and I think it's the graduation rates we had amongst our student athletes. Having a GPA above 3.3 mm -hmm. uh, for the department I think were huge. I think personally, uh, one of the best memories I have, and that was just recently speaking at the high school graduation. I was a keynote speaker where my daughter graduated, so it was pretty cool being able to watch her walk across the straight stage, get a diploma, and then give her a hug. And I'm sure that USD is really going to miss you as you transition into something new. Tell us about what you're up to now. So yeah, uh, alluded to it earlier, jumped out of uh, college athletics and I'm working for Sanford Health in the community relations area. And mm -hmm. so my, my role when they brought me on was really to be kind of the, their, their lead contact with our college and university partners, okay. uh, to work with our sport and athletic, both professional and youth organizations. And then I'll get out into the network and work with Vermilion or is Chamberlain or it could be Watertown. The clinics, uh, when they have initiatives or areas that they're, they're looking to give back into their own communities, mm -hmm. I'll assist in that area. So I, I kind of tell people in my job as an athletic director, I, I was always asking people for money. Mm -hmm. Now I'm on the other side of the table kind of working through all the requests and relationships and partnerships and this is where the, the uh, the requests get funneled too, so I'm right. totally on the other side of the table. That's kind of nice to be on the other side of the it's table. It's interesting. I can certainly appreciate what they're doing and why they're asking, Right. having been there all sure. the time. Sure. Yeah. Well, David, thank you so much for joining me today. I mean, you have led quite a unique career, and, and I, I'm looking forward to seeing what is next for you. But thanks for, for sitting down with me today. Well, thanks for having me, Mitchell. Yeah. JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars is Sioux Falls' premier adult beverage retailer with the widest selection of premier wine, spirits, and beer in the region. They're located at 3000 West 57th Street in Sioux Falls. It may feel like spring is still weeks away, but graduation season is just around the corner. Book your graduation event with JJ's today. Visit JJ'sWine.com for more information or email events at JJ'sWine.com to find out what they have to offer for event space, catering, and beverage service. This Kelloline Living segment has been sponsored by JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. Locally owned since 1998, a true mom and pop shop.